Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we went back to court, we started cross-examining a lot of testimonies, and things are going pretty rough for us right now. It seems like it's pretty conclusive that Maya Fey channeled a spirit who killed Dr. Gray, and that therefore, I guess by the court standards, that means that Maya Fey is guilty of the murder. However, if you'll remember from last episode, there is a glaring contradiction in this photo, and I'm going to go ahead and prove it. Your Honor. Oh, the fire has returned to your eyes, I see. This picture. Within this picture lies a critical contradiction to all the testimony up until now. A contradiction? So, you think you've spotted a problem with this picture? Then earn your keep. Why don't you point out exactly what is so strange about this picture to the court? The sleeve. Please direct your attention here. T to the sleeve. But... But there isn't anything odd about it. And that is exactly what is so odd. Something that should be there is suddenly missing. Should be there? Ah! There's a bullet hole in the sleeve of the defendant's costume. If that's the case, then it should be in this picture as well. M Miss Von Karma, you... You intended to hide this valuable piece of evidence? You will most certainly be assigned a penalty for this. Alright, this should do some major damage to her argument. Don't celebrate yet. You like to bring down the mood, don't you? Take a look at Miss Von Karma's face. Ugh! She's got that condescending grin plastered all over her face again. Tisk tisk. Jumping the gun again, I see, Your Honor. I would like to extend an apology on half of those incompetent fools. What do you mean? And what incompetent fools? If those fools down at the precinct hadn't missed the bullet hole, I would have gotten a report about it. As I didn't, I could not have known that this picture was of any value to the case. Hmm, I see. She's lying through her teeth, I know it! That woman knew about everything. The bullet hole, the picture, everything! But you can't prove that. Francisca Von Karma's idea of a perfect case is quite fascinating, don't you think? Your Honor, you need not worry. If you must assign a penalty, I'll personally make sure that the detective gets what's coming. I'm sure there will be a great gnashing of teeth at the next salary discussion. Poor Gumshoe. In any case, this is a very big problem. When the defendant was taken, was taken in, when the defendant was taken into custody, her costume had a bullet hole in its sleeve. However, from this photo, it would appear that right after the shooting, there was none. The judge is confused by this strange twist of events. This is your chance, Phoenix. Load all you've got into this one shot, all right? Got it. Watch this, Maya. Your Honor. There's only one logical explanation for the contradiction. The shooter is someone else. The defendant's sleeve had a bullet hole in it. However, this person clearly does not. There can only be one explanation. The person who shot Dr. Gray was not the defendant, but a different person altogether. V what? Order, order, order. If order is not restored, I will suspend this trial. Ow! Ugh! Why me? The defense's, the defense's argument is a complete mess. A complete mess? I fail to see how. Please enlighten us. Hey, witness! Ah! What the heck? Is that any way to ask a gal a favor? Be quiet, you! You was the one who said it was only the two of them when you entered the room. Well, you know... If you were lying, I swear that my whip would be the last thing you see. Look, sis, you're looking mighty scary, so why don't we say you... Wah! I swear, I wasn't lying or nothing. There wasn't anyone else in there, honest! You see? Now, riddle me this, Mr. Phoenix Rat. Where did, where did the defendant vanish to? 
And where does this w other woman appear from? Um, why is it lately all I want to do is cry? Well, if the person in this picture is not the defendant, then this poses two very big questions. First, where did the defendant vanish to? And second, where did this person come from? That's right! Now hurry up and answer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Come on, can't fall apart here, Phoenix Wright. I can't believe that even me is calling me by my full name. But, I mean, how am I supposed to prove something like this? Had you enough yet, yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Or do you think you have enough to turn things around even now? To turn things around? That's right. Me would always turn things around and change your perspective. Phoenix? So, where did this intruder appear from? Where did Maya appear disappear to? I need to look at this situation from a different angle. Let's see. What if before we broke in, the third person was already in the room? What if Maya had left that room somehow? If I could prove that either one of those conditions were true... Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you've come up with. I think that what happened before we forced our way into the channeling chamber is Maya had left the room. Maya had left the channeling chamber at some point, and the defense can prove this. Oh, how a foolish fool makes a foolish face when dreaming of foolishly foolish dreams. Maya Fave was being looked after by her aunt, Morgan Fay. The chances of her leaving the crime scene are lower than the detective's salary. Anyway, let's see some evidence. Prove that from the murder until the time of arrest, the defendant had left the room. And we present the key to this case. The literal key. Miss Hart, do you remember this key? Um, well, I've seen it. Hey, that's the channel and chamber key, right? Before the channel and started, Maya locked the door from inside with that. The defendant herself locks the door? Yeah! That's why we all couldn't get the door open. That key's the only one of its kind, after all. Oh. One of a kind, you say. Wait. Mr. Phoenix Wright? Yes? It looks like she's catching on. I'm afraid to ask, but... Why is that key currently in your possession? Huh? What do you mean? If Maya Fey locked herself in, then the key should have been with her. Yes, agreed. However, she did not have the key at the time of her arrest. Ah! Well, ain't that a kick? So how come you're holding it? I got this as a present from a certain little girl. And that little girl was nowhere near the crime scene at the time. That's preposterous! This means that Maya Faye must have left the room. If she had not, then I would not be holding this key you see before you. N no! It seems we have come to an impasse. This picture has clearly captured the face of the murderer. However, is this person the defendant or not? The defense is arguing that this person is not the defendant. Furthermore, as proof, this key has been submitted as evidence. Miss Von Karma. How can this be? At this point in time, a verdict on the defendant is not possible. My perfect case! How is there a flaw in my perfect case? Don't think you've won yet, Mr. Phoenix Fright. I am a prodigy. I have never lost a case, and I don't intend to lose here in this courtroom to a fool like you. I don't care what I have to do. I will get my guilty verdict. And that's enough. If you would like to continue, do so in the lobby. Court will reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. That is all. Court is adjourned. June 21st, 1.32 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 3. Wow! That was you, Pearly? You summoned my sis? Yes, I felt I had no choice. Great going, Pearly. I knew you were special. 
Hey, Nick, did you know? Um, yeah. It's not like anyone else in there could have done that. Hmm. Nick. I know you're trying really hard and all, but... I really don't remember ever leaving that room. And I don't think that a third person could have gone into that room. Yeah. Well, at least we have until tomorrow to figure things out. Like, uh, what happened in that room, for instance. Yeah, I'm counting on you. Aw, I envy the two of you. Oh, by the way, Nick. Do you think you could take Pearly back home for me? Sure. Alright, Pearls. Ready to go buy some tickets? Huh? A tick-cat? Poor thing. So sheltered. <laughs>